Gene knockout is a common technique in studying gene function. In this practice, the gene of interest is disrupted by altering the cell's genomic DNA. Any phenotype that results from gene knockout gives insight into the function of the disabled gene. Conventional knockout experiments are frequently achieved in animals, but need a huge investment of time, money, and labor. Therefore, these experiments are usually restricted to well-funded labs or core facilities. This has presented a large hurdle for researchers exploring gene function. The breakthrough of CRISPR technology has turned the tide and made gene knockout a much more accessible tool for many more research labs. The key revolution brought about by CRISPR is the creation of double-stranded breaks sequenced specifically. With CRISPR, scientists can create double-stranded breaks at virtually any site in the genome. To repair the double-strand breaks generated by CRISPR, there are two main mechanisms, non-homologous end joining and homology-directed repair, also known as homologous recombination. With non-homologous end joining, the ends of the double-strand breaks are simply reconnected together and this process is highly error-prone, introducing mutations, insertions and deletions, and in many cases resulting in gene knockout. Homology-directed repair, on the other hand, utilizes a repair template where desired changes are flanked by left and right homologous sequences. Through homologous recombination, the desired changes are incorporated into the genome. The CRISPR knockout knock-in kits utilizes the homology-directed repair system. To plan an HDR-backed knockout experiment using plasmids, the researcher needs to create the following constructs. One, a plasmid coding for the gRNA, targeting the intended site for double-stranded cleavage. Two, a plasmid coding for the Cas9 protein, and three, a plasmid serving as the repair template with a designed sequence flanked by the homologous arm region of the cleavage site or donor vector. Origin has created pre-designed kits to make knockout experiments even easier. For each gene locus, we have created a specific kit. The first two elements are provided in a single all-in-one vector. The gRNA vector Targeting the start of the coding sequence was cloned into a vector containing the expression cassette for Cas9 protein. The donor vector was also created with a knock-in GFP puromycin cassette, flanked by the homologous arms of the chosen cleavage site. This permits the selection of knockout cells via puromycin marker. The promoterless GFP provides additional utility to monitor any upstream promoter activity that might be present. To start your knockout experiment, simply co-transfect a gRNA vector with a donor DNA plasmid into the cells. The Cas9 enzyme will cut a double-stranded break near the start codon, and through homologous recombination, the functional cassette will be integrated into the genome, replacing target gene. In the end, three events are achieved. One, the target gene is knocked out through gene disruption. Two, GFP will be driven by the endogenous gene promoter, providing added information of promoter strength, and three, the puromycin marker under the PGK promoter is integrated into the genome, enabling the selection of successfully edited cells. The protocol starts with co-transfection. There will be three separate experiments, one of the two gRNA vectors co-transfected with the donor vector, scramble control with donor vector. After transfection, the cells must be passaged for about 20 days before puromycin selection, as the donor vector alone before genomic integration also provides puromycin resistance. Culturing the transfected cells for 20 days ensures that the episomal form of donor vector is lost. This diagram shows the details of transfected cell passaging prior to puromycin application and selection. For HEK392 cells, 48 hours post-transfection is considered G1 cells, at which point the cells are split 1 to 10 and grown for three more days. At G2, CRISPR-targeted cleavage and gene editing should be finished, but the percentage of edited cells will be small. You can perform optional genomic DNA analysis using G2 cells. If the data are negative, you can redo the analysis after puromycin selection. After G7, apply puromycin selection using the doses appropriate for your cells. To summarize the CRISPR knockout knock-in protocol described so far, Step 1. Co-transfect one of the gRNA vectors with the donor vector, along with the appropriate controls. Step 2. 
Passage transfected cells for around 20 days. Step 3. Apply puromycin selection and isolate individual cell colonies. Please note that the drug selection doses need to be determined by kill curve for each cell line. Five days after puromycin selection of transfected HEK293 cells, almost all cells in the two control transfections died. However, as expected, the co-transfection with the gRNA construct produced puromycin-resistant cells. The fourth step is to analyze the puromycin-positive cells to detect the knockout. If you have a good protein-specific antibody, you can use Western blotting to evaluate the knockout. It is best to use this method after isolating single colonies. Another method is genomic PCR to verify the correct GFP puromycin integration in the genome, followed by sequencing to confirm the integration. To amplify only the edited allele, design PCR primers following these rules. The forward primer should be upstream of the 5' prime end of the left homologous arm of the donor vector, and the reverse primer should be in the GFP region. In this example, knockout ATG5 gene was conducted by the protocol. Genomic PCR products of the correct size were amplified from the gRNA constructs plus the donor co-transfected cells and not from the scramble control transfected cells. The PCR products were further sequenced using the PCR primers to confirm the correct integration. Sequencing data using the forward primer shows the correct integration of the 5' primed end of the left homologous arm in the donor vector. The reverse sequencing primer confirmed the correct integration of GFP puromycin cassette. The original ATG5 gene was replaced with GFP. Origin offers genome-wide human and mouse CRISPR knockout knock-in kits. With these complete, ready-to-use kits can knock out almost any gene from the genome and knock in the GFP and puromycin cassette simultaneously. You can study the consequences of the gene disruption and potentially do a promoter study at the same time. Origin also has other functional cassettes to provide different fluorescent proteins, luciferase, or different selection markers. If you wish to have the CRISPR knockout kit created a different donor vector, please visit our website to request a custom project. To learn more, please visit the Origin website and our YouTube channel.